Good morning. Uh. It's time for the Tuesday, October 22nd meeting of the Board of County Commissioners of Indian River County. We're going to begin with a moment of silent reflection for the first responders. This will be followed by an invocation by Reverend Scott Alexander of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Vero Beach, and then the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Susan Adams. Please rise. Alexander. Let us be one in spirit. Dear God, that ever-present spirit that breathes love and belonging so faithfully across our broken world, help us this hour to remember that there is no us and them in your creation. Help us to remember that you made us all irretrievably in your holy image, no matter what color of skin, what language of tongue, what music of soul, what place of birth, what faith of heart, what orientation of love, identity, or gender. We are all your children, precious, particular, holy. May we govern ourselves across this wide world and here in this local community, never forgetting our indissoluble belonging to one another as children of God, equally beautiful, the one human family clinging to worth and one another for life and being. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now go to item four, additions and deletions to the agenda. Fellow commissioners, any additions or deletions to the agenda today? There be none. We'll approval. Get a motion Second. to approve, which we do from Commissioner Flesher, seconded by Commissioner Adams. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 4 0. Commissioner O'Brien absent. Ah, Mirabile Dictu. No proclamations or presentations today. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Information <laughs> items. No information items. So we will quickly move on to the consent agenda. Commissioners, anybody care to pull anything from the consent agenda for discussion? There be none. I'll ask if anybody in the public would like to pull anything from the consent agenda for discussion today. There be none. Mr. Chairman, move approval. Second. Ooh, we have a motion clearly by Commissioner Flesher to approve the consent agenda, but a close, hard Aye. fought second, which we're going to give to Mr. Zork. Commissioner Zork <laughs> for the, the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes 4 0. Commissioner O'Brien absent. We move on to public notice items, and I'll ask Mr. Rangel if you'll read today's public notice item. Thank you very much. We have a public notice of a public hearing, which will be scheduled for November 5th, 2019. This will be to consider Hanlex Development LLC's request to rezone plus or minus 4.40 acres from CN, commercial neighborhood, or neighborhood commercial district, to CL, limited commercial district, and so SOGRA Properties LLC's request to rezone plus or minus 1.037 acres from CN to CL. Uh, the, the properties are located north of South Dyke and Ditch, uh, St. Indian River County, St. Lucie County line, and east of 27th Avenue Southwest. Uh, that's the first property, and the second property is located west of 27th Avenue Southwest, east of 27th Tribe Southwest and approximately 315 feet north of 25th Street Southwest. This is a quasi-judicial item. And with that, I turn it back over to the chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Rangel. We now move on to departmental matters. First up is community development, affordable housing advisory committee membership. Good morning, Mr. Street and Mr. Du Bois. Good morning. And, and 
good morning as well. <coughs> Switch this to the slideshow. Okay. For the record, my name is Bill Shute, uh, Chief of Long Range Planning for Indian River County. And before you is the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee membership agenda item. <coughs> now, the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee is required by Florida statutes for jurisdictions that receive state funding for affordable housing and triennially the counties to review the established policies and procedures, ordinances, land development regulations and adopted local government uh, comprehensive plan and recommend specific actions or initiatives to encourage or facilitate affordable housing while protecting the ability of the property to appreciate in value. Uh, membership requirements are outlined in statutes. <coughs> Uh, in on December 4th of 2018, the Board of County Commissioners directed staff to con convene its existing Affordable Housing Advisory Committee that was outside of the three-year period to discuss, study, and review affordable housing issues within the county. And uh, just a quick side note, the, uh, the AHAC had met back in 2017. So if we're going to triennial schedule, actually it'd be 2020 that they would have some recommendations come back to the board. So it's going to kind of <laughs> come back anyways in that time frame. Uh, the committee has met a total of four times since the December 4th, 2018 direction from the board and is making good progress. However, for those four meetings, it's been difficult to achieve a quorum. Current AHAC membership is established in County Code Chapter 308 and Resolution 2008-038, which was adopted in March of 2008. And that resolution and code requires the AHAC to contain 16 voting members and one non-voting DCC liaison. And when you have that many members, a quorum is a minimum of nine voting members. With respect to the meetings that have occurred since December of last year, um, nine attended the first meeting for the AHAC and that just barely made a quorum. Seven attended the second AHAC, so there was no quorum. 10 ascended the th attended the third AHAC meeting, so there was a quorum, and seven attended the fourth AHAC meeting, so there was no quorum. Now, uh, wrapped into this, in, in 2016, the state revised its statutes and established a AHAC membership requirement for a minimum of eight and a maximum of 11 members. And along with that, the state said at least six of the members must be from 11 categories listed in state statute. And those include categories such as home builders, bankers, real estate professionals, for-profit and non-profit affordable housing developers. Now, the county's current AHAC includes members in all 11 state, ca state categories, plus municipal representatives. So here's a, a table taken from the staff report listing the 11 um, categories listed in state statute, which six members have to be from these 11 categories. Now, we also have on the, the right side of the table the number of times that attended uh, the county AHAC meetings, the, the members that were appointed to these, these groups. And you can see uh, one, one through five attended between two and four times, and that's the advocate for low-income persons in connection with affordable housing, the not-for-profit provider for affordable housing, real estate professionals, uh, local planning agency representative, citizen who resides within the jurisdiction. And then when you get to number six, seven, and eight, um, those representatives attended one time, and uh, number nine, 10, 11, they attended zero times. So. If we were to get to six, and, and if you base it and focus on the issue of attendance, then uh, you can look at it and approach it from the top five, will they consistently attended? And six, seven, and eight, they attended one time, you might be able to select from one of them if you wanted to continue with the, the existing representatives. <coughs> now the other committee member attendance, uh, as mentioned earlier, we have representatives from the cities and towns, uh, and we have the county commissioner liaison who have attended AHAC meetings consistently between two and four times. <coughs> so th those members could also be continued as me members based on attendance. Uh, um, so staff recommends that the Board of County Commissioners authorize staff to proceed with preparing an amendment to Chapter 308 of the Indian River County Code of Ordinances to make AHAC membership requirements consistent with the amended Florida statutes and authorize staff to proceed with advertising for a public hearing for the amendment and authorize staff to proceed with preparing an updated resolution for Board of County Commissioners consideration to adjust AHAC membership requirements 
be consistent with state statute and approve the proposed membership makeup of the updated AHAC to consist of one non-voting BCC liaison and 11 voting members as, as detailed in the staff memo. And, and again, that, that detail was focusing on the top five on this slide with <coughs> one other option being between six, seven, and eight. Um, and the suggestion of the staff report is to contact in that order and find out which representative is most interested in continuing. And then to also include the municipal representatives that are on the board, or are on the committee, excuse me. So that, uh, if you have any questions, be hey, happy to answer. Bill, can you go back to the slide with the one before that? But okay, so it would be the f top five, per perhaps one would, would be the top five, then five municipal representatives, and then one of the next three in red. <coughs> okay, just right. so we're all clear on that. Commissioners. I'll start by saying I think it's a good idea to follow the state statute in this case and get down to 11. I, I, I think that you know, given that the last three have not been to any meetings, I see no problem or issue of disinviting them to the AHAC. I think two things. One is the municip munis municipals have been well represented in a complex issue, and I think affordable housing is an issue very salient for the municipalities. So my leaning is to have as many of those as possible given both the attendance and the importance of the community. So those are my thoughts. Uh, fellow commissioners? Yeah, so um, I would agree with those thoughts and I think at the end of the day we need to have a committee that's comprised of people that are engaged in solving the issues that are in front of them. Um, you have to have a quorum to make decisions. So I would look to you guys as far as the extra person, however you think in that red area is best, most beneficial and will be attending, then I have no problem with that. Thank you. Agree. Commissioner Zorg. Yes, I think we we need to have people that are likely to show up because I know some members um, flew in from out of state to be here that aren't here during this particular time of the year but made the effort to be here and then we don't have a quorum. So some people make extraordinary efforts to be there and some that are right here in town don't make it. So um, this is an issue that's not going to go away anytime soon. They need to have a group that's focused on figuring out how we can bring more affordable housing uh, to the county in general. So um, I'm in favor of the proposed changes. Commissioner Zolp. And I'll well agree. Uh, Mr. Zolp and said uh, as uh, we reduce the amount of other committees that we did have an abundance of. Uh, we had uh, individuals that were on committees that had other aspirations, so they were getting familiar with uh, local government and the process, and uh, they weren't actually there for the mission at hand in some cases. And uh, I believe that that's uh, the, the attendance shows I itself too. We have another committee or two which has consistent vacancies, and uh, they're very difficult to fill. Uh, basically, there's no uh, uh, repayment for their travel expenses and obligation as far as other committees are concerned. So uh, with that in mind, um, it's, it's best to have those who are there for the right reason and purpose and uh, the mission at hand. So given all that. I'd be happy to move staff recommendations. Second. Yeah, but it would have to be staff recommendation including the idea of having the top, f the first five members, the five municipalities, and giving staff leeway for the 11th representative uh, as one out of the six, seven, or eight in red? Yes, that was. That was the yes. motion. Mm -hmm. So seconded. So we have a motion to approve staff recommendation as outlined by Commissioner Adams, seconded by Commissioner Flesher. Anybody in the audience care to dis discuss or ask any questions about this issue? There being none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Issue passes 4-0, Commissioner O'Brien absent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up is establishment of a Census 2020 Complete Count Committee. Roland, it's all yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, I'm Roland DeBlois, Community Development Director. 
This also has to do with the committee. This this has to do with establishment of a census 2020. But this will be sunset quickly, right? Well, this will be a, <laughs> a <laughs> special <laughs> purpose committee. Right off the bat. Yes. Okay. Uh, for a, what's what we call a com complete count committee. Just some background. The United States Census Bureau is mandated under the U.S. Constitution to take a census every 10 years. The last one was taken in 2010, so we're up for the next one coming up quick in 2020. Uh, the census is important. It enumerates all the people in the country. Uh, a very important aspect of it, it determines the amount of federal and state funds that local governments may receive over the next 10 years. It affects the future redistricting and representation of the state and federal government levels. For those reasons, it is a very important for each local government to ensure that every resident of its community is counted. A complete count committee is a major vehicle for planning and implementing the local census related to the efforts uh, to address all the unique characteristics of the community. It's the role of the committee would be to plan and implement a local-based promotion to publicize the importance of the, the census. And per the Census Bureau, the Complete Count Committee, which it strongly recommends, it recommends should actively, in, actively involve leaders from a cross-section of the community, including segments of the population most difficult to enumerate, make government employees aware of the census through internal promotion, localize and augment national outreach and publicity projects, also coordinate local promotional activities with the timing of the various Census Bureau field operations, keeping the local participation alive uh, throughout the process and, and involved. As recommended um, by the, the Census Bureau and as had occurred back in 2010, the Complete Count Committee should comprise of influential community leaders, including representatives of government, education, the media, faith-based organizations, community-based organizations, and business, with the, the goals to be to make everyone in the community aware of the census and to motivate the community to participate in the census. Some sample activities is for the committee would be to develop a list of barriers and concerns <laughs> to address, such as areas where there's problematic for participation, like non-English speaking groups or gated communities, seasonal residents, uh, create ways to dispel the myths and alleviate fears about privacy and confidentiality, place census materials in, in water bills and tax bill mail outs, uh, implement a public awareness campaign, sponsor census booths at public events, place census messages on local marquees and um, service announcements in the local media. So those are just some of the samples of that are recommended and have occurred through the past committees. Hmm. Uh, staff recommends the makeup of the committee that it be established. We recommend that the committee establish the committee, um, the name of the committee action, community action committee. And as I mentioned, it would be for this specific purpose, and we would see that it ran through, uh, would run through June of next year. Uh, staff recommending it be composed of 15 members, which would be one county commissioner, one, one representative from each of the five municipalities, representative from Gifford, Oslo, Wabasso, and Felsner areas, uh, representative from the school board, a local business representative, a representative from a local faith-based organization, and representative of the local media. And we do have, I believe, a representative, uh, Mr. Robert Loring from the U.S. Census Bureau. He is here as well to answer any questions. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Roland? I've got one question. Why two from Gifford? It's more of a population uh, related. Well, we're one representative for each municipality, and you have municipalities of 22,000, 23,000, and uh, another one of 17,000. Hmm. So we'll see if the gentleman from the census can answer that one. Just 
that just jumped out at me looking yeah um this is the approach we took at the in the in 2010 it's there's no particular reason um other than uh, opportunity for participation it, um it's so i don't really have another answer i'd like to that. get a little better reason than that if, it, if we can come up with one so i'll ask if there's anybody from the public would like to speak on this issue sir do you want to come and speak up to this issue you have come up to the dais please Good morning, everybody. My name is Robert Loring with the U.S. Department of Commerce, and I'd just uh, like to thank you guys for your consideration for the Complete Count Committee. Um, I'd like to try to address your question with regard to the number of folks in Gifford. Um, typically, uh, areas like Gifford and Felsmere are considered hard to count areas, so we tend to focus our efforts on those communities to try to get people involved with the census. Okay, but that belies the fact of why one for Felsmere then? And so you have a different e area, but you also have Felsmere in a, okay, you, so you have one from the Felsmere area and one municipal representative of Felsmere, which would give the Felsmere area two, yes. kind of, sort of. Okay, just, again, that just Mr. jumped out at me. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yes. Chair. I need to interject. In, in 2010, which was the uh, last census and the census that I was involved with, um, what we did was we had somebody from the Progressive League and somebody from the Past Association. This way we had an umbrella of involvement and it, it was a great outreach because we had the pulpit uh, in for awareness. And in addition, in Felsmere, uh, we did have uh, more than one, although we had one on the committee. Uh, when we got together, and we did something like the, the Frog Lake Festival or other events out in, in the West, Western lands. We had a lot of individuals volunteering and actually walking for awareness. So uh, it might, might be denoted as one or two, but the, the numbers of volunteers uh, grew uh, exponentially. Well, when you mention it that way, it becomes, to me, stronger. I mean, the fact, especially in a community like Gifford where you have the Pastors Association and the Gifford Progressive League. Uh, so I don't know if we can suggest those two groups, but who actually picks the people, Roland, to be on the committee? That would be uh, through the commission. Uh, okay, so I mean, I would, if we go with the two from Gifford, I, I'd like us to certainly consider the group's representation because they would be I think, just as you said, more active and more able to reach more of the community. So and I think that would be a fine thing. And again, Robert had, had approached me as well, but uh, because we did fairly well in 2010 uh, compared to the other 67 counties, uh, 66 counties, uh, the challenge is that uh, I knew that I was going to be on the canvassing board and some other things, and there would be some conflict coming. Okay, great. Sir, anything else you'd like to add? No, just like to thank you all for your help. Thank you very much. Anyone else from the public wish thank to comment on this issue? Anyone else? Commissioners? I'll make a motion that we establish a complete count committee with the characteristics as listed. And do we want to pick a county commissioner today to be represented on that board? Congratulations. Oh, I mean, <laughs> oh, sorry. Anybody care to volunteer? I'll be happy to volunteer. Oh, that's wonderful. I, I thought that was very now appropriate to, to be wrapped up in your, your motion. So do I hear a second? Yes, that's most certainly a second. Uh, we have a motion <laughs> by Commissioner <laughs> Adams. Nobody want a second? because Commissioner were Adams would like the opportunity to experience the rewarding. Uh, uh, Stop all your head. <laughs> you got it. We have the uh, motion from Commissioner Adams, the second by Commissioner Flesher. Any other comments from the audience? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 4-0. Commissioner O'Brien absent. Roland, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I think also for the public to know that there's an estimated value, and in, in the number may vary, but it's I've, I've heard the number of a roughly $1,700 per person counted per year times 10 years. So every person missed being counted has a dramatic uh, financial impact of resources that would be allocated to our area from the federal government. So. It's very important that we get everybody counted. Well said. Thank you. 
No other comments on this one. We'll move ahead to county attorney matters. 11th Drive Project Developers Agreement. Mr. Rangel. Thank you very much. Uh, the CIE of our comp plan includes an alternate to the widening of 37th Avenue, which is the aviation extension project. County staff has negotiated a developer's agreement with two of the property owners for dedication of right-of-way and also for the design permitting and construction of 11th Drive from the south boundary of the Virginia Russell property to 41st Street per the developer's agreement. In the next six months, both of the property owners, as part of the developer's agreement, will dedicate what will be a 60-foot right-of-way, and then they would then receive impact fee credit uh, for the dedication consistent with our impact fee program. And then afterwards, Russell would then design, permit, and actually construct the roadway improvement with the county reimbursing Russell for those improvements. Uh, I would just like to note that prior to the design and permitting, all the parties must agree on actually a cost estimate for the project. And with that, I turn it back over to the board for any questions. Thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Rangel? Commissioners? I'd be happy to make a motion, uh, make uh, move approval and authorize the chair to execute the developer's agreement. Second. We've got a motion by Commissioner Adams, second by Commissioner Zork. Anybody from the audience care to speak on this issue? There being none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 4-0, Commissioner O'Brien absent. Thank you very much. You're welcome, but I'll ask you to go ahead with the request for closed attorney client session relating to ocean concrete. Great. Uh, County Attorney's Office would like to schedule an attorney client session consistent with Florida statutes with the board concerning the ocean concrete case. Uh, that would be for a time certain recommended for 1030 on November 5th. Uh, per the statute, the discussion will be confined to settlement negotiations and strategies related to litigation expenses. Uh, the attendees would be the Board of County Commissioners, County Administrator, County Attorney, and our outside counsel, Mr. Paul Berg. Uh, there would be a court reporter present. We would expect that the session would last about 45 minutes. Uh, with that, uh, just recommend, uh, request that the board approve our setting the meeting for November 5th. And with that, I turn it back over to the chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Rango. Any questions for Mr. Rango? Nope. No, sir. There being none, are there anybody from the public who wishes to comment on this issue? There being none, commissioners? Move approval of the closed attorney client session for 10.30 a.m. on November 5th. Second. We've got a motion by Commissioner Adams, seconded by Commissioner Flesher. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 4-0. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, Mr. Rondo. Thank you. We now move on to special districts and boards. The first is the Solid Waste Disposal District, recycling at charter schools. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. For the record, Susan Flagg, Solid Waste Disposal District. I'm being joined by some friends this morning, um, Charlotte from Waste Management and Carter. Um, so the SWID staff has been working very, very hard on the expansion of the successful school district of Indian River County Recycling Program to the five charter schools in the county to include Imagine South Bureau, who's representing me today, Indian River Charter High School, North County Charter Elementary, Sebastian Charter Junior High School, and St. Peter's Academy. The implement, implementation of the program will be the same as the program that's currently running in the public schools in which the five charter schools will receive all necessary recycling containers, equipment, and education to start, start a successful recycling program. SWID applied for and was awarded a monetary grant of $2,500 from Waste Management's Think Green Grant Program, and a special thank you to Waste Management for that. SWID has determined that the total cost for the program will be $4,500. Therefore, staff is requesting that the SWID Board approve the provision of the additional $2,000 needed to support the expansion of the recycling program to the charter schools. Thank you. Anybody else want to participate in your discussion? Hello, my name is Sherry Matthew. Thank you for having me. I am the middle school science teacher at Imagine South Bureau, and I'm super excited. I got to pick an elective this year for my sixth period, so I have been working with students about recycling, what's going on in our environment locally, what's going on within our country, as well as globally. And I've been working with them. Every two weeks, I get a new group of kids. The first week, we investigate all our misunderstandings about recycling, about pollution, you tell that to the state legislature? Yes. <laughs> and 
I've actually had them take data within our school within seventh grade and I've never seen kids more excited about going through garbage and sorting. And we found out that we fill one container of the old recycling bins per seventh grade out of five classes. So that's five containers per week. And then if you do it by month, every four weeks, that's 200 containers. And then for a whole school year, 40 weeks of school, that's 1,800 cans of recycling goods that we could repurpose or reuse in a different way of form. So this week I have them creating what they've learned, PowerPoint and interactive components within a pro presentation to educate their younger grade levels. So it's not just me educating them, they're edu getting the opportunity to educate younger grade levels as well. So I'm excited to have Ms. Black help us with this opportunity as well as waste management. And thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Anyone else gonna give us any words today? If the not, does the blue bin want to talk? Well, no, <laughs> if, if the blue bin talks, I'm going to be really upset because my bin doesn't talk. My bin doesn't even, my bin doesn't even have hands to help me. I'm going to be really upset. So with that, I think it's a pretty clear recommendation, mm -hmm. which I would be happy to, to make a motion for if I could, but I, I can't. I would be so. happy to move um, the, the $2,000 funding for the expansion of the school recycling program. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Adams, second by Commissioner Flesher. Any other comments from the audience? I'd just like to thank you all for your recycling efforts. It's a difficult task, but I think it's a great thing that you're doing it, and I'm sure that your students are gonna be active participants. With that, all in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed? Passes 4-0, Commissioner O'Brien absent. And, you know, but you're not supposed to overfill the bins there, so put the lid down, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> There's no contamination in that blue bin, is there? Let's not look at let's not look at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to bring yeah, right. Yeah. Come on up. Okay. Ms. Perez, you, you think you can get recycled? Oh, yes. uh, uh this is a debut, uh Debbie Perez uh, operating recycler. Look at this. As like I do. <laughs> I think that has more miles on it than your cargo bus. Good chance. <laughs> Is that heavy, uh, how much? You don't want to stand behind the blue bin. It's what? You don't want to stand behind the blue bin. Okay. Stand above no, it? you don't want to stand. You move over oh, this way. Come on. Okay. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yours probably spends more time outside. <laughs> Good Uphill battle from here. Still in the Solid Waste Disposal District, we're going to go on to item two, ranking of firms for RFP 2019045, Yard Waste Processing and Recycling. Good morning, Mr. Burke. Good morning, Commissioner. For the record, Vincent Burke, Director of Utility <laughs> Services. On February 5th of 2019, the board uh, considered a public-private partnership P3 proposal submitted to uh, the SWID as, as part of um, an effort to try to, I think, assist some of the efforts going on in and around the landfill. Uh, there was also some supplemental proposals from Gen 2 LLC and Cinegro. Uh, however, the SWID board directed staff to enter in negotiations with uh, Indian River Echo District uh, with respect to the landfill gas agreement. Uh, previously, the board did approve the, the landfill gas agreement between Indian River Echo District and Solid Waste and Disposal District. Uh, on February 19th of this year, the SWID board approved a conceptual approach for the issuance of a request for proposal and RFP for the yard waste processing and recycling services. So staff, in conjunction with the purchasing department, uh, issued RFP 2019-045 uh, with the following items that are outlined in the agenda. 
to receive, grind, screen, and load up to 75,000 tons per year of yard waste to transport, dispose, and ultimately recycle up to 40,000 tons per year of mulched yard waste. Uh, with SWID reserving the right to keep 35,000, approximately 35,000 tons per year of mulch for landfill daily cover up on the landfill. Uh, the draft sample term was a seven year with one optional uh, three year renewal for a total, if possible, of seven, uh, I'm sorry, 10 years. Uh, and then there was a um, initial ranking by the selection committee consisting of uh, some qualifications and references, a technical proposal and a price which was 40% of the total uh, scoring out of 100 points. So a selection committee comprised of Mr. Hamanchi Mehta, the Managing Director of the Solid Waste Disposal District, uh, Vincent Burke, myself, the Utilities Director, and Kristen Daniels, the Budget Director, all received uh, independently the proposal submitted on um, September 17, 2019. Uh, that was through DemandStar, 237 subscribers, 16 firms downloaded the plans, and seven firms submitted proposals on the 17th of September. It must be noted that there was uh, an addendum one that had been issued while the RFP was out on the street, so to speak, uh, and that had included updated pricing at a per ton rate. Uh, so while the bids received uh, were asked to provide the addendum one with respect to the bids that were submitted. However, one of the proposals that are being considered, Atlas Organics LLC submitted a protest saying that uh, they had uh, an issue with respect to the annual cost provided in both the original and updated pricing form. So there's protest procedures that were initiated and reviewed by the purchasing manager to, re to review the protest. Uh, and it was ultimately determined that the pricing for all the proposals could be compared, not just using the addendum one, but also the total annual cost, both on the initial form that was submitted as well as the addendum one. Uh, in order to come to um, a total annual cost. You'll note that the table in the agenda does list the total annual cost and is not broken out on a per ton basis with respect to receiving grinding and or recycling. And so um, the protest was upheld and submittals of both initially Atlas and BMR, which were initially excluded from the selection committee review, were ultimately decided by um, by review parties that uh, those things could be reviewed um, without any additional I guess calculations or uh, pricing uh, adherence to be able to determine the annual cost for submittal. Subsequent to that, PJ's land clearing and excavating uh, submitted a timely protest in response to the reinstatement of the two proposals, initially Atlas and BMI, stating that no, in fact, the addendum one should have been submitted and therefore uh, the two proposals should not be considered as part of the total review process, the purchasing manager then reviewed that protest with department staff and the county's office to determine that PJ's claim was ultimately invalid for some of the reasons that were initially described by myself and outlined in the agenda item for the board's consideration. So in addition to this, we are currently uh, on a year-to-year -year contract with Mr. Mulch to receive and process the yard waste down at the landfill on the north side of the access roadway. And on September 30th of this year, SWID received a 90-day termination notice, which is part of the existing contract uh, that would allow them to exercise that termination clause. Uh, so in essence, they were notifying SWID that December 30th, 2019 would be the last day that they would be providing services to uh, SWID. So as they say in some contracts, time is of the essence. Uh, we note that uh, as of today, there's 69 days remaining between now and December 30th. Staff did reach out to Mr. Mulch to acknowledge receipt of the termination notice and had asked just if it, there's any reason um, that uh, some of the negotiations or some of the processes fail, would they, uh, his firm be able to provide 30 or 60 days additional notice? And I'm not sure if we received any information from Mr. Mulch at this time. So we always like to have a plan B, but certainly we, we were trying to see if Mr. Mulch would be amenable uh, to work with SWID if for some reason uh, that time comes and goes. Um, so to be continued on that. And just to let you know too, as part of the contract with Ms. Merlch, uh, they have to provide tail coverage for three years. So with the final invoice, before we pay the final invoice, uh, we certainly are going to make sure with risk and uh, the attorney's office that we have a valid uh, tail coverage of environmental and uh, coverage for SWID for any and all issues that may be on the site after Mr. Mulch leaves the, the, the site. Mm -hmm. So just a quick analysis, we had submitted uh, to the board for review the proposing firms that are listed in the, uh, the table in the agenda on page two. Uh, out of the seven top firms that were reviewed initially, there were three firms that had, uh, in essence, been shortlisted. 
Those are in no particular order, bankers, maintenance and inspection, otherwise known as BMI, Justin Industries, J3, and third, Atlas Organic, Organics, LLC. So just a brief summary uh, for the board's consideration, the bankers maintenance inspection, they're a local firm that does provide uh, existing services. Um, BMI proposed to transport the mulch to Nutera, which is up in, otherwise known as Denali, which is up in Felsmere. You may be aware that uh, there is an organics um, compost facility. Um, there was a letter of support from Nutera, but no firm pricing or any kind of contract that was entered into between the two firms. So it's really like a verbal handshake at this time, but certainly um, uh, Nutera is interested in receiving some of the, the material that uh, BMI may propose to transport up to uh, Felsmere. Initially, there was a 36,000 ton per year estimate that was uh, uh, verbally told to some of the selection committee during the short list ranking, but upon further investigation, we confirmed with uh, Nutera that really is in fact about 18,000 tons per year. Uh, there was some information provided about Scott Organic, but we did not find additional information with respect to Scott's. BMI is local. They've been operating in the area for quite some time. They do have operators available, and of the three firms, they would be the quickest, according to them, to be uh, able to come under contract uh, if possible. But certainly, one of the things the board needs to know is of, of most of the firms that are listed here, additional equipment would need to be purchased contingent upon a contract. Uh, so some of the equipment would not be sitting ready to go today, but certainly would need to be purchased as part of the contract with, 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 the, with the, the county. Justin Industries provide the second lowest price per ton, uh, but their disposal price was uh, pretty much similar to what's being done today with our existing contractor. They would receive, um, process the material, but then they would truck it down to Taylor Farms, which is quite a long ways down to Martin County to um, uh, land apply that mulch for uh, quote unquote beneficial reuse of that material per Florida Department of Environmental Protection requirements. Uh, they did say that they would offer to build a 30 by 40 uh, maintenance concrete pad, estimated approximately $60,000 on the SWID property. And if they got a 10 year agreement, they would leave that slab for the SWID use uh, after said term. Uh, they do have equipment and operators available could start within two weeks from the notice of award according to Justin. And thirdly, Atlas Organics, which initially had the highest uh, per ton rate um, as compared to BMI and Justin Industries. However, you recall that uh, price is only 40% of, um, of the evaluation criteria. Atlas, I think, had the most robust, I think, long-term uh, plan with respect to some of the material not to either bring it to Felsmere or land apply it, but certainly to create an extended aerated static pile facility on their property, Indian River Echo District's property next door, uh, to be able to uh, receive that material and to compost that material in a 45 to 90 day time frame with uh, forced air that helps to um, accelerate the composting process. Uh, they did have extensive contracts with North Carolina, South Carolina, and while they are not local, uh, they certainly have some experience in talking to some of the folks in the shortlisting. I believe they had 22 employees. I believe the largest of the three firms with experience uh, of municipal contracts in North Carolina and South Carolina. One of the caveats that SWID is concerned about is the fact that they would have to hire and bring some local folks here uh, to get them up to speed quickly. And of the three firms, they estimated they would need about two months time to get up and running with respect to the employees, the equipment, um, and, uh, and uh, ability to be able to process that material. So that's a concern from SWID staff with respect to the timing. Uh, however, with, with the long-term plan that was submitted by Atlas uh, in terms of compost and potentially additional uh, biosolids and or food waste, uh, they are certainly looking to not only invest about $250,000 on SWID property for improvements to the area to receive and process material, but certainly they're looking to do substantial improvements on the Indian River Echo District uh, with respect to a long-term uh, partnership that potentially may be there. So based on the short listing, the selection committee comprised of um, the budget director, the managing director, and the utilities director reevaluated said proposals and came up with a new ranking in which Atlas Organics was the top ranked firm of the three. Uh, you will note on the funding section within the agenda items, we're currently under contract for about $1.3 million per year total annual processing uh, with an existing processing fee of $11.55 per ton and a disposal fee of $9.79 per ton that was tied to a CPI increase uh, yeah, that had to be brought and approved by the board. Um, we have estimated uh, in fiscal year 1920 a budget of about $1.5 million. 
uh, with respect to the recycling of the professional service accounts. So we have at least budgeted a modest increase from what we are currently under contract today for the um, potential increase that may be affected by SWID due to the higher costs of, of going out for the service. So although staff's recommended for the top firm is the highest annual cost of three, of uh, $1.36 million. Uh, we certainly believe it's under the proposed budget cost of $1.5 million uh, due to the fact that uh, SWID would be getting approximately $250,000 um, benefit for the improvements to the property due to the long-term uh, evaluation and uh, investment that would be provided by Atlas. Uh, SWID would recommend that the board approve the selection committee's final ranking uh, with the top ring firm, which would be Atlas Organics LLC. And if uh, for some reason said negotiations were to fail, uh, then staff would be able to go with the second ring firm, which in this case would be BMI. I know that there are some folks here uh, with respect to this issue. I certainly um, will defer to the board to ask any questions that they may have, but I believe that there are some folks that would like to, res to respond or at least address the board with respect to this process and some of the ranking criteria that were outlined and what the selection committee has proposed today for the board's consideration available for any questions that the board may have. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Any questions for Mr. Burke? Yes, I have a couple. Um, on the, of any of the other respondent uh, companies, did any others have specific dollars amount listed for infrastructure that would be included in their cost where on um, Atlas, it's the $250,000 number you mentioned do we know if any of the other applicants had a similar um, kind of capital investment at the site? I know Justin Industries did propose to put up some office structures and to be able to create a concrete slab for some of their equipment on the site. Again, the 30 by 40 that was on there. I'm not sure if Mr. Payne had uh, provided any kind okay. of improvements uh, with respect to the submittal that they had. Because at some point, if somebody's including a asset that's gonna remain at the end of the contract, how do you deduct or quantify that when you're looking at the numbers? So, um, and then the total number of years that this contract would would run, and what is the option? So potentially, it could be ten years, but the first term is seven years, right? Uh, with a one year, or I'm sorry, a one time three year, three -year option. Okay, that's all I have for right now. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Burke? Mr. Burke, please stand by. But we'll ask if there's anybody in the audience who'd like to speak on this issue. Come on up to the dais, please. Name and company for the record, please. My name's Mike Hooker. This is, uh, this is Jason from PJ's Land Clearing. All right, I'm from BMI, Bankers Maintenance and Inspections. We both bid the RFP. Uh, we would like to appeal to the council that we are both local companies up here. We would joint venture Pat's been my mentor for over 10 years, and uh, at PJ's, he's the one that got me my first grinding job, partnered with, helped me get my first grinder, my first big excavator. I mean, the guy's been a, a true mentor to my wife and my kids and myself. Jason has been working for Pat uh, about two years now. He comes from a strong background of biosolids processing, um, making different soils, uh, doing... Um, Tremendous amounts of recycling uh, for both his father of 70 years, himself of 30 years, myself 25 years, and Pat's over 35 years. Combined, that's over 100 years of local experience that we can bring to the table. Not only were we the cheapest, we did not know that we were to put in some infrastructure. It wasn't in the bid. If that's a requirement or a desire, I can pour concrete. I've been doing it a long time. And I got a great, great, great price at CMIX. So, if y'all want a slab out there, we can definitely entertain that. But we'd really like to have the opportunity to do this contract for our county. Ned Biggs is sitting in the back from Nutera. He'll guarantee the amount of mulch that I've already been bringing and that we'll keep on bringing to him. Besides Scott's Organics, PJ's has had a, how long is your? Uh, we currently have a PO with Scott's miracle Grow for 30,000 tons uh, per year of compost. Um, Personally, PJ's has been working with the Indian River Eco District for two years now. Uh, we have close relations with them. Uh, we were the ones who went into the um, decommissioned plant and did uh, clean up and process all the remaining material from when it 
did go uh, under there um, and cleaned up that plant and sold um, the soil that we were able to process from that material to Scott's Miracle Grow. Uh, there, the material that was not processed when we arrived at the plant, uh, we did process and it is undergoing a static decomposition right now, um, which the timetable is almost met to go ahead and process that and sell that material as well to Scott's Miracle Grow. Uh, we have again worked with the Eco District for two years, and we have a standing relationship and agreement with them to do this RFP utilizing that property. I'm not sure if uh, the claims made by Atlas were um, investigated and, and proven to be true, because uh, I just overheard that they had stated that they have a agreement with the Eco District. Um, of course, it's within the right of the Eco District to make any agreement that they wish to make with whoever they wish to make. I don't have a non-compete of anything of any sort with them, but there has been a two-year ongoing relationship with them, and uh, we've done a good job cleaning up for them so far, and uh, we had hopes of continuing that relationship, and we've received no communication from them saying otherwise. So uh, it's actually a bit of a surprise to hear that Atlas uh, is claiming ownership of any kind of relationship with the Indian River Deco Eco District. Um, but again, uh, I'm not saying that I know all the information, um, and it's just news to me to hear that. So uh, again, PJ's has been in business for 25 years. Uh, we have multiple grinders, over 10 excavators, 10 loaders, uh, an arsenal of equipment that would be easily uh, deployed instantly to this project. A uh, large workforce, and um, completely able to take care of this um, RFP, uh, especially with um, BMI, who's also equipped to handle this contract. Uh, we're also local people uh, who have a high interest in the community, and I believe that it would be in the best interest of the county uh, to employ people who can respond to problems uh, and have a care for the community because they're a part of it. And they live in it. So, uh, with that said, do you have anything yeah, else? Yeah, we like, uh, and again with the community response. We've been here 18 years, my wife and I. I've got two children born in the house, and I live in for them 18 years. I haven't moved around. I'm, I'm here. I use that landfill. I use that land. I see the mess that's out there <coughs> on a daily basis. I bring a numerous uh, semi loads of palm trees in there to prepare for the for the um, you know I, I do land clearing. I do a lot of land clearing. Um, I've had, what, eight trucks in the last two days going through um, Ned Scales over at Mutura, bringing him material that if we run this facility for you guys, we're going we're gonna to run it right. We're going to have everything classified. Everything's going to have an end use. There's going to be recycling credits that are going to be applied back to our county that we're going to be producing with um, Scott's Organics, with Nutera with all our end users. I mean, this is stuff that nobody else is bringing to the table right now, and this is our passion. This is what we do. Our, we, we don't like seeing stuff go into the landfill. The only thing they need is ground cover, you know? And, and it's, it's amazing that somebody can come from out of state into our small little beachfront community and take the opportunity from us local business owners that have been here, it's like waste management coming in and taking all our dumpster rights away. We couldn't provide dumpsters, you know? I mean, and it, it's, it's wrong, I think. And that's, I'm sorry I'm so passionate about it, but I really, we put a lot of time and effort in trying to get this. And I don't want to see a slab keep us from getting it. And I don't want to see some guys from South Carolina that have no relationships with nobody down here. Their kids don't go to school here. You know, they have no interest in seeing the recycling programs at the school. You know, they, they only want to grind Sir, stuff. There's no need to denigrate the competition. It's oh, I'm not denigrating. Oh, no. Okay. You've come mighty close. I'm sorry. I'm not. We, okay. We're happy to hear about your qualifications, but we prefer not. Sorry about the passion, but. Yeah. Jason, what was your last name? I'm sorry I didn't catch My it. My last name is Disbro. Yes, sir. That's D as in dog, I-S, B as in boy, R-O-W. Thank you. First name is Jason. Anyone having any questions for these people? Well, Thank you. Commissioner? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Mr. Hooker has brought up some uh, valid points. Um, and in full disclosure, I'm familiar with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hooker for many years. Um, 
when I, when I wore a green uniform. No, and they weren't in the back of the car. They were uh, outside <laughs> the car. <laughs> uh, the, 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 their, their word has always been uh, sincere and good, and I appreciate their professionalism as business people. Uh, with that said, though, uh, what was said by uh, these two individuals, I'd like to ask uh, Vincent Burke something. No, hold on. Do you have any other uh, questions? I, I Anybody have any other questions for these gentlemen? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. We really do. <laughs> Mr. Burke, uh, Mr. Hooker brought up that he did not know that the slab was in the RFP or, or was not in the RFP, and, and it's correct. It was not, correct? But we're basing the decision on infrastructure and you, you, you noted many times that the other applicants said they were going to add infrastructure. Uh, so that was, the decision was based upon, was that part of the decision based upon the added infrastructure? Yeah, I just wanted the board to be aware of the fact that they were willing to invest some additional dollars on the SWID property at, at no cost to SWID. Certainly it was, I was actually trying to look to see if that language is in the, uh, in the contract when Mr. Hooker was speaking, but it was not. Um, but certainly that's something that was not the deciding fact, but was one certainly of many in addition to the price proposal. Again, the price proposal was only 40, 40, 40 points out of a potential 100 points. It wasn't a main ingredient, it was a spice. But qualifications and experience were also part of the deciding factor to be able to come up with a ranking. Again, there was an initial ranking based on the submittals that were in September, and then there was a re-ranking based upon um, uh, interviews with the top three applicants, and then there was a re-ranking after that time based on the information that was presented. So um, certainly that was part of uh, the decision-making point, but I wouldn't say it was the ultimate deciding factor. And, and, and the first assessment was, and who ranked number one on the first assessment? I have to get my notes. The purchasing managers here. Um, I believe it was. It was BFG. BMI was ranked first, uh, Justin Industries second, and then uh, Atlas was third on the initial ranking. So, and then they were deranked to a lower status because of? We had, we invited each firm for interviews. Um, we also independently checked references, um, asked about experience. So based on the interviews and discussions with the committee members, uh, the re-ranking was done, and um, uh, Jennifer can go into the ranking process, but, but that, the interviews is what resulted in the new re-ranking of, of the firms with Atlas being first, BMI second, and Justin uh, being third. And then there, there was another statement I heard about um, there might be a delay that Atlas would take about two months to get up and running to get some local help. And this is, now we're getting to October, uh, the, the end. Yes, sir, so one of the questions that were asked of November, all- November, December, all, December we're done, right? All top three firms was, um, if you were under contract, what would be the time necessary or needed to be able to get your personnel and your equipment on scene to start being able to process and separate and, and transport that material for recycling? And of the three, BMI was the fastest, and then followed by J3 Industry with Atlas Organics that we had mentioned was the longest of the three to be able to get up and running to be able to process that material. So what removed the fear about Atlas getting up and running? Because they said two months at least. Mm -hmm. uh, commissioners, what I would say from what I recall from the interview process and asking that question is, uh, the, the time to basically bring the equipment and, and whatnot, that, that could be a quick process. Um, the hiring of the local, you know, they're gonna bring staff down to start the operations, but they wanna hire local folks. So that's where I think not knowing how fast they can recruit um, is why they ask for that eight week window to be able to recruit local, local work. They have the sort of the equipment and whatnot, that, that's, that's gonna be a quick process. That's not gonna take eight weeks to bring equipment down. It's, it's gonna be the hiring of the local, local uh, staff that's, that's gonna be the key. I'm, I'm not questioning the, the assessment factor, just 
it, it didn't make sense to me how we, we got there with some of the objections and some of the qualifications that we heard today. It's the first I'm hearing about um, uh, infrastructure, a pad, and, uh, and, and a willingness, and uh, w a building, and a cement pad. Uh, again, we, we only know we have limited input until you bring it forward we we can only know that it's going out for bid. That's it. So uh, I, uh, please forgive me for questioning. I'm, I'm not questioning anybody's ability. I'm just questioning how we got where we got and how somebody got deranked and why. Uh, one of the Things I'll, I'll, I'll mention as a committee member is, you know, checking references. Uh, one of the things that was mentioned was there was a letter of um, interest or support from Nutera uh, that BMI submitted in their original proposal, and it was for about 18,000 tons. When we, when we came into the interview with BMI, uh, they quickly said, no, 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 uh, there are some new things going on in Nutera. They can take 36,000 tons because we were concerned what's going to happen to the 40,000 tons that we're going to have left over. Uh, so we, we asked that question. They said, no, uh, no problem. Nutera can take double the amount that was in their original letter. I contacted Nutera, confirmed in writing, uh, and they wrote back that, no, they can only take 18,000 tons. So for me as a, a review committee review member, I felt that there, there was passion in wanting to get this job, uh, but I didn't feel comfortable that in a interview process, I was told one amount, but when I confirmed with the, the company that's going to take it, uh, they said, no, we, we can't take more than 18. So um, so for, for me, again, it was just I was uncomfortable with, with that process. Uh, there's a lot of new equipment that BMI needs to, to purchase as well. Um, and one of the things that's being brought up right now is, for example, PJ's land clearing was a one of the seven bidders or RFP respondents. There wasn't a joint venture that was listed. We evaluated the two companies separately. PJ's was not ranked in the top three. And, um, and when I contacted PJ's, who was listed as a reference for BMI, um, I was told by the president of, of, uh, of uh, drawing a blank here, uh, PJ's, sorry. I was told by the president of PJ's that he, he had no intent uh, on sort of partnering uh, at the time uh, with BMI. Uh, I was told that all the equipment that was listed in BMI's proposal was all belonging to PJ's. So I just didn't feel comfortable with, with sort of the reference review that I, I received from BMI. Uh, there's not a lot of, um, one of the references was listed as Gutler Brothers, for example, by BMI. I contacted them, I said, you're listed as a reference, did they do this work for you? They said, uh, no, we, we had a contract with them, but they were never on site. Uh, basically, PJs came in and did the work. So again, I, I felt like experience-wise, I, I wasn't very confident with you know, the experience and the references that they, they provided and the changes that occurred uh, during the interview process. So I, I, um, I certainly voted for somebody that I felt that when I checked the references for Atlas in North Carolina, South Carolina, talking to my <laughs> counterparts that had run the solid waste department, uh, they had nothing but positive things to say. I talked to some farmers that are taking the product, and they had very positive things to say. So, so I evaluated not just on the improvements that were being made, but the overall package that we were going to get for, for our, our facility. I'm more excited that they'll be in end use uh, because I don't think we should be um, sending our stuff out. We have enough problems. I mean, we stopped the whole biosolids thing and uh, decaying matter problem. Uh, for the time being, and I don't think we should be adding anything to the environment. And anybody who is interested in sending it out to Felsmere, uh, I, I'm a little concerned with that um, because I, I, I think it's going to cause another rift uh, and, and another environmental problem. Uh, I, I, I realize it's vegetative waste, but there's all kinds of other things inside of that, <coughs> as we know. As far as the political thing, I'll close it with. Um, you, you said, you know, when you spoke to the other vendor or applicant that said that they didn't have any intent, um, I don't know if this makes any sense, but in the room, 
there are two people that actually ran for the same seat that I'm sitting in, okay? I work very well with those individuals. They had no intention on that, and I had no intention on that. But at the end of the day, we did it. And the same way as we all work together, and we, we learn each other, so things change. Sure, I, I, I respect that. And as, as committee members, we are only allowed to look at information that were presented at the time, and so that's what we, we did. But when you said he, he had no intention on, you know. At, at the time of the call. Right, business, business, and business has a very unique way of congealing sure. as far as if it's going to be a matter of success or failure. Okay. I'm Thank you, Commissioner. Yes. Commissioner Adams. <coughs> Yes, um, Vinny, I'm assuming that the initial ranking was based on the submittal of the application, and then the re-ranking was based on the interviews and pointed questions that you guys had to each one specifically to flesh out some of the details yeah. in that. Okay. Um, personally, for me, I think that I'm, I'm excited about this proposal and this recommendation. Um, I think Atlas has a positive track record with other government contracts. I think that's very important um, to, to understand. Um, I think the, their innovative process and longer term opportunity plus the investment and in infrastructure for the county and the future potential associated with that gives us the most options in the long run. Um, you guys know I love recycling. I just, I think this is a great opportunity to do something different. Um, and that will, in the long run, expand our recycling um, program at the landfill. So that's where I stand on it. Thanks. While he's standing there, any more questions for Mr. Burke at this time? If not, I'm gonna go back and ask if there's anybody else in the audience who wishes to speak on this issue. Come on up, sir, name and address for the record, please. And if you're representing the firm, the name of the firm, please. Thank you, uh, commissioners. My name is Jim Davis, I'm with Atlas Organics. Uh, thank you very much for having us here. Um, really, I think <clears throat> the only thing that, that I would like to add on to is, is, of course, we do have a, a positive track record with municipal governments in Durham, North Carolina, and in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, but also on top of that, not only is it, uh, you know, are we going to come here and get the, get the work done, um, our, our philosophy is, is very much, we're very Im embedded with the U U.S. Composting Council. We're very embedded with you know, education on when it comes to waste diversion and things like that. So it's not just that we are um, simply a processor of, of waste and things like that. So I just wanted to um, sort of illuminate that. We're, we're very involved. We have members. I'm on the North Carolina uh, Compost Council board. Our um, COO is actually part of the young professionals on the national level with the uh, United States Composting Council. So it's, it's a two-phase, this, this day and age, you know, dealing with waste issues in communities is one thing, trying to find a, a sustainable and even a regenerative solution for that is another. So that's one of the things that I think that I just wanted to highlight that we are, that's who we are, that's our blood. It's not just the hard work, it's, it's trying to make a difference as well. So, um, and I would say, just to interject, I think it was interesting that the, that the uh, recycling people were here from the, from the, uh, from the school system um, so we're very involved on that side. And if, if the county determines that food waste diversion or even biosolids is something that would be brought into the fray, then that's something we have a lot of experience with um, on both sides. And more importantly, perhaps even on the education side. So it's not easy to divert waste. It's easy to collect yard waste and it's easy to collect C and D things, things like that. But it's very hard to change people's minds. Um, so we, we're seeing some success there uh, in trying to deal with uh, food waste diversion, which is, of course, a small piece of the conversation here and even just a potential piece, but it is something that we're, we're involved in. So I just wanted to say thanks again for uh, considering. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that you guys have a process by which you go through. Um, you've gone through that. It seems rigorously. I was able to meet with the, the teams interviewing us. and. They <laughs> ran us through the grinder, so to speak. So, um, but I appreciate the opportunity there and I'm happy to answer any questions that I can and come back to you if I can't answer a question. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I have a, a question. On the material that you'll process, what will be your end use of it where, where BMI has some outlets that 
take certain volumes, where will your process material? So similar in, 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 the, in the sense of that's what we do. We, everything that we do is compost. We compost using the processes that, that you've been described this morning. Um, we go to a lot of our product goes bulk. Our idea is to stay as local as possible with it because that's sort of the, you know, we're, we're impact um, minded. We believe in a circular economy. Atlas Organics is about if you find something and you can reuse it, keep it as close as you can to, you know, to, to repurpose it basically so you truck it less, so that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So. Any other questions for the gentleman? Thank All you very much. I'll ask if there's anybody else in the public who wishes to speak on this issue. Okay, you have spoken once, so if you would, no, but if you would, be brief and not repetitive. I'll be as brief as I can. Thank you. Um, I would just also like to state that, again, uh, we do have a current contract with Scott's Miracle Grow. We do currently process and recycle material into compost. Uh, we know how to do it. We also work with the United States Compost Council. Um, I've had relationships with them for eight years now. Um, I've been involved with probably processing around a million yards of yard waste into compost that is that has been sold to Scott's Miracle Grow. Old Castle, farmers, nurseries. Um, again, PJ's has contracts with government entities for a long time. We've been in business for 25 years. Uh, we own all of our equipment outright. Uh, we have four grinders, over 10 excavators, 10 loaders, every other piece of equipment that you can really think of. Um, and we are more than qualified as a local company to do this uh, RFP. Um, to enhance the RFP, we're more than willing to utilize uh, Mr. Hooker and his firm uh, to strengthen our our group and and really deliver on the performance of the RFP f for the county. Uh, we have no, uh, there's no doubt that we can perform the contract and get to work and, and get it done uh, professionally and uh, complete the project as as desired by the county. So um, I just would like to add that at the end here, and I really appreciate y'all's time, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Commissioners, your pleasure. I'd like to move <coughs> the selection committee's final ranking of firms and authorize negotiations with the top ranked firms and subsequently ranked firms should negotiations with the top ranked firm fail. There's a motion from Commissioner Adams. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Zork. Any other conversation or discussion? Good evening. Chairman, um, in trying to sort this out, this is a little, it's not confusing, but there's moving parts that are, that are in this. That um, if I'm understanding right, the, the BMI, the lowest cost provider, is, is now proposing kind of a joint venture with PJ's, whose price would it be, BMI's price or PJ's price? And it, right, um, then you have the infrastructure piece from Atlas, which has been something that's come up before, so maybe they're just being a little proactive and picked up on the conversation that that was, was a prior need that had circled through that kind of operational area before. Um, I appreciate the local side. We're I'm born and raised here, so I get that part. Um, I think though where we're at with staff's recommendation, which is the reason for my second, is um, it's, it's I think where we need to go at, at where we're at. Um, if one of the disposal outlets is the, the group in Felsmere and they can only take X amount, you do have the Scott side. The, I think what's missing is we don't have, that wasn't part of the package of how all these pieces might come together. Uh, and maybe if it was, it, it might have a little bit of a, a different sway on my part. We have to go with what we have that's, um, that staff has kind of flushed out and vented. Um, the RF process isn't perfect but it's what we're required to work under <coughs> and kind of what we're judged on is uh, and following uh, the rules so that was the reason for my second from Commissioner Adams any, any other comments we have a motion by Commissioner Adams second by Commissioner Zork all in favor aye, aye. 
Any opposed? No. Motion passes three to one. Commissioner O'Brien absent. Commissioner Crusher voting against. I thank everybody for coming here today and that completes today's agenda. Thank you.